the channel. So it's been a little while. It's been probably a month or two since I posted a video, let alone a video on this truck. And you know what they say, the last 1% takes 99% of the time. That's not totally the case, but it's what it seems like with this thing. Um, been getting all these little details done on it finally, and I can say that it's, uh, no, it's not 100% done. I need to charge the air conditioning still. But we can say it's 99.9% .9 done, and let me show you what we did. So everything up here was done um, quite a while ago. It was all fairly finished up. Everything works up here, all the lights and everything. Coming into here, this is actually the last thing I just finished up doing. Um, it was a whole big thing trying to get these emblems. I ordered them online and they never showed up and yada yada yada. got a refund, had to get them locally. It was a whole big thing, that's why they were never on there. And that's why they took forever to get. Um, but they're finally on there. I will say, I don't recommend sticking these on with double-sided tape. They're not flat on the back like I thought they would be. They have kind of a contour like this. Like the opposite of this, right? Like this comes out while on the inside it goes in. So to try and build up enough uh, double-sided tape on there to get them to stick nicely doesn't really work that well. And I don't really recommend it. What I did, I have a couple grommets in the fender that are a super tight fit to go onto the studs that are on this. And then there is a little bit of double-sided tape in there just to secure it on there. But I don't really like it. I'd much rather be able to bolt it from the back. Unfortunately, you can't bolt it from the back unless the fender's off the truck because you need to get your hand in uh, the backside here and the holes around here, which is also where you know the cowl is and the heater box and all that. So, well, and the air fender too. So you can't get your hand in there. So the best time to put these on is before the fenders are on the truck. So keep that in mind. So that got done. And then uh, about a week ago, I finished up these. These are actually homemade kickbacks. Um, they're made out of stainless steel. I actually used a template off of my Duramax to make these, cut these out of steel and then just bend them in the brake. And I believe it's a two inch kick, might be inch and three quarters, not totally sure. And then this is just a uh, semi-truck mud flap that I cut into four to fit on this truck. Stainless hardware, stainless steel plates, so it's not gonna rust, not gonna corrode or anything like that. Not that this truck will really see salt or anything, but they're well-built, they're nice and sturdy, have them riveted on. And I, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about them. I kinda like the look without them, but I don't mind the look with them. One of the things here in Saskatchewan where I am, the RCMP and the cops are absolutely brutal for pulling people over for, for mud flaps. So I just wanted to have something on there just to cover the tire, let alone the rock chips I've gotten in this truck. I live on gravel just a little bit and even driving slow, I've already got a handful of rock chips that I've had to patch on this truck. You can't really see them, but I know they're there. And as we come into the back, same thing, mud flaps are on. They actually don't look that bad. Like they blend in everything else. They match the mat on the exhaust tip. I think they match the wheels with a little bit of stainless that's in there, matching a little bit of chrome on the wheels. I think it's a nice little contrast there. And then everything on the back, I believe you've already seen. Same thing on this side, we have the kickback mud flaps. Don't look too shabby. And then we have the other emblem on the fender, obviously. Coming inside, it is all wrapped up now. The gauge bezel's in, steering wheel on, don't remember if that was in the last video, um, but literally everything on here is, uh, is all put together. And it's not a super great fit, I'll be honest with you. Like I fiberglassed this dash and I repainted it. It's not the best fit, um, but you know, it's it's still better than an aftermarket dash. Those things do not fit at all. Um, so this is still better than that. But it is what it is. I don't mind the way it looks. If I had to do this all over again, I'd probably get an actual stainless uh, dash trim so it matches the doors. That's kind of something that does bother me a little bit, but to most people, probably not even noticeable. But honestly, everything, uh, everything is... Like I said, 
uh, complete other than I need to charge the air conditioner. And then when we come around, this is all buttoned up finally. Um, got the engine cover installed. Um, all my fluids are in there. Fluids are good and full and checked and all that. Uh, washer tank, have some fluid in there. They do work. Not that I'll really use them, but they do work. Fuse box is finally mounted. All this wiring is tidied up the best I could. Still kind of a mess, but you know, it's just the way it goes with one of these. And I was having a brake issue. I figured out the brake issue. It was actually the uh, proportioning valve had switched over um, to block the rear because it thought there was a leak in the rear. Must have happened while I was bleeding it, who knows. Um, so it switched over, blocked the rear so that everything was going to the front. Basically what I did to reset it, I cracked a bleeder screw on the front and then hammered on the brakes so that the truck or the proportioning valve thought that there was a leak on the front and then it shifted over um, in an attempt to block the front. It just shifted over to center. So then it centered it so then I could have uh, front and rear brakes working. Bit of a tricky thing to figure out, but once I got it, they work perfectly now. I have no issues with the brakes at all anymore. So the truck is actually getting appraised tomorrow. Um, so that pretty much means that's wrapping up the build. Um, I'm sure you still probably see this truck around on the channel. I'm not sure how much longer I'll own it. Um, once it's appraised and I get the air conditioning sorted, I think it's probably going to end up going up for sale. And I know a few of you have reached out to me and have talked about being interested in it. Yeah, that's probably going to be the last video on this truck. So I do have things in mind as far as getting a new build. Um, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully have another one in the next little bit here. Um, in the meantime, I have other things to work on right now. I'm doing up a box for my Duramax and I'll be repainting. Well, I'll be painting that. It's getting new box sides and then doing some other color matching on that truck. And then there's other little things here and there that I can film. We're going to a pretty big truck show here in August. Um, I'll be filming that, uh, the red line run. That's a rally that takes place in Western Canada. We'll be doing that at the end of August. So that'll be on the channel as well. So we do have some content coming. Unfortunately, it's probably the end uh, for this truck, but hopefully you'll still see it around. So be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, especially if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Hoping to get a pretty decent build coming next. And uh, with all that being said, see you guys in the next one.